Sergei Magnitsky's torture and murder, let's call it what it really was, is but an extreme example of a problem that is unfortunately all too common and widespread in Russia today. And here's a person whose only crime was to bring to the proper attention of officials corruption, public corruption within Russia. And corruption in Russia is very widespread. Russia is much more corrupt uh, than it should be given its level of development. In one famous case, Sergei Magnitsky died in prison trying to protect hundreds of millions of dollars from being stolen from the budget. Sergei was a lawyer, a husband, and a father. He exposed a group of Russian officials and organized criminals, stealing from the Russian people. But instead of making him a hero, his own government imprisoned him to protect the criminals. They made sure that he never made it to trial. So these guys basically just killed him. They, they, they murdered him, tortured him to death. The impact of that event among the political society in Russia was very important. Everybody in Russia and abroad knows about this case. This case is not unique. Think of it this way. There's backyard soccer, and then there's the Premier League. Magnitsky's demise is the Premier League of the abomination going on in Russia today. What happened to uh, Sergei Magnitsky was an awful crime. There's, there's no other way to describe it. Those that are accountable for that, had something to do with that, uh, should be punished. But justice in Russia is not likely. Russians who protest for justice in this case are harassed and arrested. The people who are responsible for the death of Sergei Magnitsky are still in their jobs even though everybody knows what they did and everybody knows who they are. It turns out that these people will always win in court, even when they've committed murder. In fact, the government has promoted them and has begun to prosecute Sergei Magnitsky again, despite the fact that he's been dead since 2009. This will be the first posthumous trial in Russian history. But what does this matter to anyone outside of Russia? The fact is, the world is economically interconnected. The criminals who killed Sergei laundered their money through US banks and bought property in Europe. Success depends upon economies that function within the rule of law. That's not an American idea or a Russian idea. That's how people and countries will succeed in the 21st century. If we can't punish the murderers here, let someone else punish them. It's time for us to take action. And that's why we have introduced this legislation. This legislation will provide some encouragement to people who, in Russia now, in some cases, have lost almost all hope because of the corruption of the judicial system. Other countries are considering action as well. The European Union, Sweden, the Netherlands, Canada, and the United Kingdom. We will be sending a clear message that those responsible for these kinds of atrocity should not be able to fly into Britain, buy up property in Knightsbridge, or head off down the King's Road for a bit of light Christmas shopping as if nothing had ever happened. And it's actually quite a powerful bill. Um, you know, it talks about asset freezes. I mean, it's basically treating these guys as though they're Iranian Revolutionary Guards. But what do Russians think of the law? Russian officials always said that if you implement sanctions against corrupted bureaucrats, you implement sanctions against Russia. This is not true. Punishing corrupt Russian officials is good for the Russian people. The fact that they feel invincible is hurting Russia. In the end, it hurts Russia's national interests. I believe this should not be seen as an anti-Russian bill. It is important, needed, needs to be discussed because for these Russian bureaucrats, the possibility that their money will be illegitimate in the West is the scariest thing in the world. It's not pro-West and anti-Russia. The people who say that are themselves pro-West and anti-Russia. They steal money and kill Russian citizens in Russia and then invest their money abroad. First, they wouldn't be able to travel abroad. 
Second, they wouldn't have bank accounts there. Third, their children wouldn't be able to go to school abroad. This would have a tremendous psychological impact. Whoever is the president, whoever is the foreign minister, whoever is the prime minister in Russia, everywhere he goes, at every press conference, journalists are going to ask him about this law, about this list. Magnitsky law uh, takes a lot of influence or uh, on the ordinary, average uh, decision makers and bureaucrats within the system. Uh, because uh, previously they didn't fear any kind of potential justice. Even the possibility of getting on that list is a good enough deterrent to prevent a lot of people committing certain crimes. For many Russian corrupt officials, this would be very, very painful. If our corrupt officials, especially law enforcement, realize that this is going to come back on them and that they'll be branded for life, they're going to be more careful. There's no doubt one way or the other. Sooner or later, the Magnitsky Act will get results. So if you are going to go after these guys, you have to use not tanks, but banks. Hit them in their wallets, because that is what they care about.